So here it is, here's my new email, brought in all four lines of SharePoint, brought in the image column, resize the image so it fits in the box. We could play with this more, we could center it, we could center every column, we could adjust the widths of the rows, but this is the basic structure to build an HTML table with image columns from your SharePoint and send it to your email. All right, so I have a very basic flow. It's a manual trigger, manual trigger. You can set up your trigger how you want, if you want it scheduled or if you want on a button click or however you want to set up your trigger. And then I have two string variables. All right, so I just set up two string variables and this is going to be for my CSS because I want to make a pretty HTML table. And then this is going to be for another variable that we'll use later on. Now our first step to get the columns and the images from SharePoint is a get item step. So we're going to do get items from SharePoint. And we want get items, not get item. Think about that, right? We want all of the items or based on a filter query. So we're going to use our SharePoint site. And for me, it's called task list. And the list name is called uh, my image list. So if I go to SharePoint, you can see I have a SharePoint site called task list. And my list name is called my image list. And we are not going to do any filter queries or anything like that. You can do that if you want to do a filter query or a top count, if you want the top five or something like that. You, you can do that on your get items. Now, we want to do an HTTP request to SharePoint. To SharePoint, I saw it right there at the top. And I'm going to do my SharePoint site name, so that's the task list. And then the URI. And you can see it's giving us an example right here. We're pretty much going to do very close to the same thing. So we're just going to do underscore API slash lists slash get by title. And it is going to be the name of our SharePoint list, which is my image list. My image list. Now, if you add spaces to your your list name you may run into other issues you can normally find your list name in the url of your sharepoint site but mine is just my image list try and cut out the spaces and then it, a single quote ending parentheses slash items and in between your parentheses here we are going to use the id and it's going to put it in apply to each right because there's many items and then we need an ending parentheses there. All right, so that's our HTTP request. Next, we're going to parse JSON. So when we do a request, it's going to come through as JSON. Now we're going to parse JSON. And actually, before we even parse JSON, we want to generate a schema. Let me show you how you generate a schema easily. We're going to go to Compose and do a compose operation. And we're gonna pull in this HTTP request of the body. We're gonna pull that in. I have to delete, it, delete this in order to keep going. And I'm gonna just run the flow one time manually. All right, so I'm running the flow. It does give me a warning. It's saying, hey, you know, maybe put in a filter query. I only have three items. We're fine for right now during testing. Okay, we ran that through, and if we go to our compose action, and we go to the outputs, and we copy all of this right here. So copy your entire outputs. This is going to be our schema for our JSON. This makes it so much easier for us. So if we go to JSON and generate from sample right here, just paste in that output. So for the content of the JSON, we want to make sure not the get items body, we want to make sure it's that HTTP request body right here. Okay, and maybe we can even rename this parse JSON just so we know, because I'm going to have two of them, parse HTTP JSON. Okay, so now I'm going to run another compose action. This time I want to get it for the image. I want to compose, and I'll just search for image, and it's my image column. So that's, you know, SharePoint, once again, just repeating, my image column, that's what I'm pulling in from the parse JSON. And then I'm just going to do a manual test. All 
And the reason we're doing this is because we want to ge uh, generate another schema off of that image column. Okay, so now this compose has a new output. I'm going to take it. So let's see if I can highlight. I can just press Control A. I'll just copy that, edit, and now I'm going to do another parse JSON. JSON, there we go. So parse JSON, I'm going to generate from sample. Click OK. So the content for this one is going to be your image column. So it's going to be my image column here. So this is parse image JSON and then uh, parse HTTP uh, JSON. So now we can actually delete these composes. We don't need them. We were just using them to generate our schema. Okay, and I'm just going to hit save for right now. Okay, so next what we want to do is do a git file content step. So from SharePoint, I'm going to do git file content. And there's a few different ones in here. I'm going to do git file content uh, point blank. And the site address is going to be the same site. And the file identifier, this is where it gets a little tricky. We're going to do encode URI component, and then we're going to do a replace in there. So then replace, and then in between the replace, we're going to put in the server relative URI from the image JSON. So from the image JSON, I'll pull in the server related a relative URL and then after this bracket what we're going to do is we're going to put in a, a comma and then we're going to do a single quote and then slash sites slash your SharePoint list and then we're going to do another comma and two double quotes and click OK. Okay so we put that in there um, I will put this in the properties of the video Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test it with an image and an email. So I'm going to send myself an email just to see if I got all this part right. So send email. And we're going to click in the top right to say code view. And it kind of puts in some paragraphs in there. That's fine. Right here, I'm just going to put in, I'm going to put in brackets image src equals data image slash PNG base 64 and then we need a comma and then I'm going to pull in an expression base 64 in between the parentheses we're going to put the file content and click OK and then I'm going to do a single quote to end or double quote to end the double quotes slash uh, greater than and then I'm going to try it out now I probably will get three emails uh, because I have three rows in my SharePoint list, but I just want to see if these emails come through. All right, so I'm going to test manually. I'm going to do another manual test. And I'm going to run flow. And then we're going to check out the email. Let's see if those images come through. So it looks like they're already coming through very quickly. So boom, we have one image, two image, and third image is probably coming. Not sure where it is, just a little delayed. I can see that I did get three emails. Let's see if I refresh. There it is. There's my third image. That's me. Okay, so we got the image part working. Now the next part is the fun part. Let's make it look good. I'm going to put it in an HTML table and we're going to do some CSS and, and make it look perfect. All right, so now we're on part two. Now I try to do this many different ways. Now the first thing I try to do was I wanted to build an HTML table. So there's a step in here, right? So HTML. There's a step in here to create an HTML table. This did not work for me and, and when I researched on it, it said, you know, oh the HTML table can't hold complex HTML in there so I couldn't put that base64 in there. But what I did is I built my own HTML table. So at the beginning of my Power Automate, I initialized two variables. The first one is CSS. So this is going to be what changes the colors of my HTML table. I just found this online. So this was just a table I found online. The next one is variable title. This is going to be the header of my table. 
So in order to do this, all I'm gonna do is initialize a table in HTML. So I'm gonna say table and then tr, th, I'm just identifying the column. So tr is one line, uh, one row across, and then th is gonna be the header of my table. And that's going to be the title first, I believe. Let me double check SharePoint. Title, approved, classification, my image column. So title, and then slash th, approved. Oh, I typed it in wrong, let's try this again. TH approved, uh, TH again, classification, and then finally my image column. Now I'm just manually building this HTML table instead of using the action because it wouldn't work for me. So if you want to try that out, you can, but this is a good practice anyways to create your own HTML table. Now I did that. Now I need one more variable I need to initialize, and this is going to loop through all of my rows. So I'm going to do one more variable, initialize variable, and we'll call it um, variable rows just to you know make that easy on us. It's a string. No, it might be, let me see, variable rows. Now, and apply to each. This is where we're going to loop through and go through all of our rows, right? So we're going to say right here, a um, append to string variable. So in my variable rows, what we're going to do is we're going to say tr, td. I'm just building the HTML. Now, first is the title. And then we're going to end with a TD. Then TD again. And the next column was proved classification. So the next column is approved. And we probably want to pull in the parse JSON, actually. I just realized that. That's why we did that. We're going to pull in the parse JSON title. And then TD here. So it is very important that you click on the right um, one. So classification, TD, and then TD, um, the last one was my image column. So for the last column, that's gonna be our, our image. In order to do that, I'm gonna do a different step here. I'm gonna compose. So I'm gonna compose. And the input is going to be what I put here in the HTML. So I'm just going to take this right here. Uh, we created this in part one. I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to put it in the compose action. And then for my image column, I'm going to put in the outputs of the compose, right? So the outputs of the compose slash TD end it. Okay, so now we have our rows. Now my email, I'm gonna pull it out of the for loop. So let me just um, back up a little, let me zoom out a little bit, there we go. So my email, I'm gonna pull it out of the for loop. And then in the email, instead of this, I'm gonna build my HTML table. So first we're gonna do our CSS, then we're gonna do the title bar, the header, and then we're gonna do the rows. Okay, so now we're getting the images, we're applying to each, we've pulled all that out. Let's go ahead and test. Let's see how we did. Just gonna do a manual. All right, I have a new email, it came through. You can see I now have a nice table. This image is a little bit uh, too big. Uh, maybe we can work on that, but we can see we have a nice table here um, with a gray background and our columns. So I saw that the image was a little bit big. Let's see if we can uh, fix that. So let's see if we can go to our, our compose action. So I'm gonna go back to edit in HTML. So I'm gonna say width equals, uh, let's try 100, height equals 100. And let's resend it. Let's see if we can resize that image so it fits better in our email. 
and that might be too small, but we can, we can figure that out, what size image we want in our email. All right, so we're just gonna run the flow again, let it run through, it's gonna loop through, it's gonna find those pictures, find the rows and SharePoint, and it's gonna send us an email. And you can see now the images are actually the same size, more uniform. We can see this, uh, this HTML. We could probably make this even better. You know, we could center things, we can change colors, but you can see now we have a table coming through in an email, looping through SharePoint and bringing in the images along with it. So one thing you can do in your Outlook box, if you select view image, uh, email source, you can see that HTML coming in here. So here's the HTML, here's our CSS that came through. And then next we started our table body with our THs and our TRs. So we started our table body and then it looped through every row and brought on the image width, image height. And that's what we built in Power Automate. We built out that HTML manually without the create uh, HTML uh, action. We built it out manually and it pastes it right into our email, makes a nice table. You could do this for every week, you could do this for every day, um, do a top count or filter query based on your created date. I really think this is useful. Thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next week.